Shalom family, this is uh, B'nai Ben Israel uh, bringing you a presentation on black history. Uh, the uh, n name of this presentation is Black History, the Inquisition. That's Black History, the Inquisition. Now, you may be surprised to know, or you may be wondering, why would we associate the Inquisition with black history? Well, believe it or not, the Inquisition has a has had a great impact on black history. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do in this presentation, uh, I'm just going to, we're going to try to keep it short and sweet. I'm only going to review eight references. Um, so in this presentation, is the, 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 um, uh, the wish is that you don't hear my words, but you hear the, these, the references of the authors that were uh, around, you know, a hundred or so years ago. So with these references, I, you know, I don't like to use references that are uh, from the 1900s or newer. So basically, whenever you open up a book and you see that um, that publication date in there, uh, I like to, to to use publication dates or books with publication dates of like the, the 1800s or older, because uh, those books tend to have a lot of a lot of tr uh, truth in them. So um, so let's go ahead and get started. Don't want to um, delay too long. So what we'll do is we're going to do two things. Do, do a couple of things. One is. Um, We'll just read a, just a few references as to the um, the color of the Jews, and then we'll get get rolling into the other the other references. I do have a um, uh, some follow up presentations on the colors color of the Jew of the Jews. Um, you know, with you know, uh, I may put twenty or so references together just to kind of put the nail in the coffin as far as that conversation is concerned. But for this uh, presentation, we're only going to do three. And hopefully these are three references that you haven't seen before. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm in a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to exit out of that and um, just take you to one of the uh, the first references. So this reference comes from a book called The Negro in the New World by uh, Sir Harry Johnston. And for some of these, I, I may not read out the, uh, the the reference there, but you can you, you will be able to see it on the screen. And if you want to see if you can find these references yourself, feel free to, to pause uh, and write that information down, and, and then you can kind of proceed. So this one comes from, again, Negro in the New World. And we're going to go to uh, page 27. And again, the, the point of this uh, reference is just to establish uh, the color of the Jews. So we're going to look at the color of the Jews. All right, my screen's a bit choppy here, so just bear with me. Um, it takes a while for my screen to re redraw because I have a lot of uh, things uh, running in the background. So we'll get there uh, soon enough. All right, almost there, just a couple of pages away. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in because on this page in particular, we want to go to page 27, and then we want it to uh, scroll all the way to the bottom, and we're going to read the footnote on this page. So I'm going to go into, let's see if I can zoom into 135%. And then I'm going to scroll over here. So hang on. All right, almost there. All right, I'm going to read this one twice just so that you understand what we're reading. All right, so this footnote, it's at the very bottom, and you can follow along while we read, but it's it while I read, but it basically says the Jews are composed of three or four separate racial elements. The Asiatic Negroid strain shows itself occasionally in the curly hair, the long eye, and and proportions of the skull. The Jewish hybrids with the Negro in Jamaica, and I know I'm going to mess up this name, but we're going <laughs> to look at it, Guana. Reproduce most strikingly the Assyrian type. All right, let me read that again. The Jews are composed of three or four separate racial elements. The Asiatic Negroid strain shows itself occasionally in the curly hair, the long eye, and the proportions of the skull. The Jew Jewish hybrids with the Negro in Jamaica and Guana reproduce most strikingly the Assyrian type. All right. So this just kind of just gets us started in linking the Negroes or the so-called African Americans 
to being the Jews. So let's uh, let's take another um, look at, an, at another um, reference. Now for this one, we're going to go to I'm going to go to my web browser because some of these uh, references I have digital copies, and some of them are are hard um, hard copies. Some of the books are hard to get to; they're rare books. Uh, they cost upwards of um, I've seen some of these books at around you know fifty thousand dollars. Actually, fifty eight was the highest I've seen them. Uh, or uh, eleven thousand dollars. So uh, don't be surprised if you go out there and you try to find them and you see some just crazy uh, prices associated with these references. And it has to do with you know they, they're just you know the, the powers to be just kind of want to keep some of these books out of mainstream. Um, but actually, that works in, in our advantage because um, you know fo folks like me that like to do research uh, when we go to, to these websites for books uh, on like things like Africa or Jews or stuff like that. Basically what I do, just to kind of give you uh, some insight, I uh, will go to the go to these websites and then I'll perform the search and then I'll uh, uh, sort the search by price. And I'll put the most expensive books at the top, you know, and the cheapest ones at the bottom. And usually the ones that are uh, the expensive books that show up at the top are the ones that uh, aren't meant for mainstream. Like, you know, those are the ones that have the big price tags that whoever, you know, uh, is out there, they, they don't want that to um, fall into the hands of people that are doing research. So, but again, that that works in our advantage. All right, so um, for our next one, let's see here. Oh, okay, all right. So this one's called uh, On the Classification and Geographical Distribution of Mammalia. Um... All right, so I'm on page, for this one, we're going to page 96, but I will, um, let me go back to the front of the, the book so that you can see the, uh, the actual uh, uh, cover of this book here. All right, so I'm um, kind of zoomed in, but you, just, you can see the, the title there. So that's the title, and that's the author uh, of this book. So I'm going to jump to page 96 and there's page 96 is on the left and let's look for our reference all right so on the in now on this one and then let me uh, zoom in on this one as well there we go <clears throat> all right um now the reference that we're looking for in this one is uh, the last paragraph on this page. Um, and let's see here. I may just start uh, midway here where it says four. But, uh, yeah. Well, I, mean, I guess we can read the whole thing. It says, with, with reference to the characteristic of color, which are extreme, we have now opportunities of knowing how much that character is the result of the influence of climate. So back in the day, they used to think that climate would have <laughs> decided whether or not you were black or white, but that's just the way it was. It says, uh, we know it more particularly by the most valuable mode of testing such influences which we derive from the uh, peculiar, peculiar, peculiarity of the Jewish race. It says, for 1,800 years, that race has been dispersed in different latitudes and climates, and they have preserved themselves distinct from intermixture with other races of mankind. It says, there are some Jews still lingering in the valleys of the Jordan, having been oppressed by the, and let me move over to the other page, top, uh, top of the page here. Uh, successive conquerors of Syria for a ages, a low race of people and described by trustworthy travelers as being as black as any of the Ethiopian races. Let me read that one again. And I'm just going to start up here where it says a low race of people and described by trustworthy worthy travelers as being as black as any of the Ethiopian races. Just for context, I'm going to keep reading. It says, others of the Jewish people 
participating in European civilization and dwelling in the northern nations show instances you know what an instance if you're black but you have instances of white you know that's you have uh, uh, those are considered exceptions but um, uh, let me start again here it says uh, others of the Jewish people participating in European civilization and dwelling in the northern nations show instances of the light complexion the blue eyes and the light hair of the Scandinavian families so I'm just going to stop there. It, it goes into, you know, climate and stuff like that. But it does. Well, actually, it, there's a little negative negative uh, information here at the, at the end where it says um, it says that the condition of the Hebrews since their dispersion has not been such as to admit much admixture by the proselytism of household slaves. We are thus led to account for the differences in color by the influence of, of climate without having to refer them to original or specific distinctions. In other words, without having to say which ones are, are original and which ones are, you know, are the add-ons, so to speak, or the, the, the uh, proselytes. But I have a couple of uh, references that should help, help clear that up too. So uh, let's take a look. All right, so you got that one. That's our uh, second reference. So for the third reference, um, this is also one that you can find on the web. Um, hopefully you can see it on the screen. Uh, the Christian Researches in Asia uh, by Claudius uh, Buchanan. And uh, so you can, should be able to see that on the left-hand screen. If not, uh, let me see if I can zoom in here. Actually, so I'm on page, uh, for this, this one, the references is on page 205. And I'm going to scroll up to the front page so that you can see the uh, the book all right so see the title all right so that's the title uh, I'm gonna scroll down and see if you can get the author all right that's the author the Reverend uh, Claudius Buchanan and again let's look at that publication date you see it 1811 so this is a book that was around 1811 and the other uh, two books were also written in the 1800s too I, did, I forgot to show that all right so um, I'm going to go down to, let's see, so we're at page uh, 205. Let me see if I can find my place again. Uh, let's see, 164. Hang on, guys. Uh, 192. Uh, all right, getting close. And, uh, all right, there it is. All right, 205. All right, um, so what's so special about this um, this quote? Well, let's go to page 205, <clears throat> and then we'll scroll down to halfway down the page to black Jews. Black Jews. All right, I'm going to read quite a bit of this, I think. Well, I think this is only uh, a page here. I have some notes here off the side, but let's, let's get started. If we have to stop, we can stop. All right, so black Jews, it says, it is only necessary to look at the countenance of the black Jews to be satisfied that their ancestors must have arrived in India many, many ages before the white Jews. I think I need to read that one again. All right. It is only necessary to look at the countenance of the black Jews to be satisfied that their ancestors must have arrived in India many ages before the white Jews. Now, if you're familiar with history with John Harkanus and the um, <clears throat> conversion of, of the Edomites, uh, you know, that will help shed some light on the uh, differences in the, between the white Jews and the black Jews, that sort of thing, because uh, during the... Um, uh, I forgot the date. Forget the date. It's like 160 something uh, BC. Uh, the uh, the Jews forcefully well, they converted the Edomites over to Jews, and from that point forward, according to Josephus, uh, the Edomite Jews were also considered Jews. So that's why whenever you're you're researching these books, uh, you may you'll see two classes of Jews. You'll see you know white Jews, or sometimes they're called red Jews, and then you have black Jews. So the black Jews are considered the ancient Jews, and the red Jews are the um, 
or the either the proselytes or the new new Jews. So uh, let's keep going. We're gonna I'm gonna start back at the top here. I'll try not to. I'll try to leave the commentary at a minimum, but just want you to know um, why certain things say say what it says. So anyway, uh, black Jews. It is only necessary to look at the countenance of the black Jews to be satisfied that their ancestors must have arrived in India many ages before the white Jews. Their Hindu, Hindu complexion and their very imperfect resemblance to the European Jews, so notice it says the European Jews, indicate that they have been detached from the parent stock in Judea many ages before the Jews in the West. And <clears throat> that there have been intermarriages with uh, families not Israelitish. Uh, I had heard that those tribes which had passed in India have assimilated so much that the customs of the customs and habits of the countries in which they live that they may be sometimes seen by a traveler without being recognized as Jews. In the interior towns of Malabar, I was not always able to distinguish between the Jew from the Hindu. I hence perceived how easy it may be to mistake the tribes of Jewish descent among the Afghans or and other nations in the southern parts of Hindustan. The white Jews look upon the black Jews as an inferior race and as not <clears throat> of a pure cat pure caste, which plainly demonstrates that they do not spring from a common stock in Israel, I mean, in India. Uh, and let me just uh, scroll down here. I think there's uh, one or two interesting lines out of this. Uh, all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that one be for now. So um, the main part there is that the um, there's some some discussion about the uh, the black Jews uh, of course, there's some discourse between the the black Jews and the white Jews, but the um, you know the black Jews were um, are considered like the the ancient Jews. They you know they have been been there longer, um, and uh, that's kind of called out in the text here as well. Okay, all right. So that's that. So I did want to just kind of pull out those uh, three references uh, as, that kind of speaks to the um, the color of the Jews. And uh, for our next reference, we're going to move into the, um, or get into the, uh, the Inquisition. So I'm going to go back to the, uh, the PowerPoint slide. We're going to jump to slide uh, three. <clears throat> and, um, oh, so as far as the Inquisition, you know, um, if you're familiar with, you know, the transatlantic slave trade, you know, one of the things that I like to make sure that people are aware of is that uh, the the part that the Pope uh, at the time had played in slavery. So for uh, for this, I'm just going to zoom in here and just read a, a quick reference. Uh, this is from a book called <clears throat> Histor in a Historical Survey of the Island of St. Domingo. And this comes from off of page uh, 220. And it reads... A curious circumstance was, however, omitted. When the Portuguese first began the traffic in Negroes, the application was made to the Pope to sanctify the trade by a bull, which His Holiness issued accordingly. In consequence of this permission and authority, a very considerable slave market was established, started, uh, at Lisbon, in so much above the about the year 1539, uh, from 10 to 12,000 Negroes were sold there annually. So basically, the the papal bull that the uh, Pope signed kicked off the slavery, kicked off slavery in that region, or kicked off the uh, transatlantic slave trade. And um, so, what I want to do is just go over to um, uh, the uh, the third slide here. Uh, let's see, and we'll read the uh, just a quick uh, blurb about the the Inquisition in Spain and Portugal, uh, just to give you an idea of of um, what was happening in Spain at the time. 
so let's let's read this. This comes from um, you know you can see the book there. It's by um, Frederick David Mokata. Uh, it's the book, uh, the Jews of Spain and Portugal and the Inquisition, uh, page fifty-seven. And I'm going to read it. The first paragraph here it says, "Unfortunately, at the time of the expulsion, the plague plague was raging in Castile." Uh, so in Portugal, and just a quick note here. So the what's happening is that the Jews um, in Portugal were told to get out. You know, they said that you guys got to leave. Um, and so it, throughout Europe, there were a bunch of what we refer to as uh, expulsion edicts. You know, declarations to you know for the Jews, you know these black Jews to get out. So this is kind of where that um, this um, uh, reference picks up. But this ref, I'm reading this reference to set up the next one. So let's go ahead and read this one. Uh, it says, unfortunately, at the time of the expulsion, the plague was raging in Castile. And the fugitives brought with them the disease, propagating it wherever they went. And not unnaturally causing their advent to be viewed with loathing and horror. Break here. All right, so... <clears throat> What's happening is that the, the Jews, um, the, you know, the plague was raging in Castile. So, you know, of course, um, of course, the, the name of the plague associated with the Jews is called what? You know, the Black Death, you know, again. And, um, you know, people didn't want the Jews around because they were making the plague was spreading, you know, uh, through the Jews. And that's foretold in the Bible that the, the that those um plagues would kind of would cleave to the Jews and follow the Jews. So as we read here, it says, this circumstance in, induced King John, <coughs> excuse me, induced King John, I'll take a sip of my tea here. <clears throat> All right. Um, this circumstance induced King John to hasten their departure from Portugal, for which purpose ships were duly provided. So the king said, get out, <clears throat> and I'll provide you some ships to get out. But then some sh shady stuff went down with the ships, too, but it's not covered in this one. Um, and keep reading, it says, this circumstance induced King John to hasten their departure from Portugal, for which purpose ships were duly provided, according to the agreement. But such was the temper of the captains and the sailors that they subjected the Jews to the hardest possible conditions. They plundered them of their goods and valuables, even to their very clothes, you know, taking the shirts off their back, basically. And then and landed them naked and bare of everything on barren po points of the African coast. So they took up everything they had, everything they owned, um, and uh, left them stranded on the, the African coast. And then it says, leaving them to die of starvation. Or to be sold into slavery to the Moors. Nor was this all. The king, uh, and that's King John, wrested from their parents all the children between the ages of three and ten. And just to pause here, it says it's ten in this reference. In other references, you'll you'll see that the uh, he later the king at that time changed it. You know, he increased it to, um, I believe it was like 3 and 16. We actually, we'll actually read it here shortly, if I remember. And then, um, and then later he, he increased it to uh, include the uh, Jewish children or young adults in the 20s. So it was basically all the young folks. All right, so uh, back to the reference. It says, nor was this all. The king wrested from their parents all the children between the ages of 3 and 10. Of, the, of those Jewish immigrants who from poverty or otherwise had omitted to pay the capitation tax on entry. So when the Jews came into uh, Portugal, they, they charged them a tax. I mean, think of it as a toll booth. So as the Jews were coming in, they put that toll booth down. They said, you guys got to pay me. And if you can't pay me, I'm taking your kids. And it says, um, <clears throat> um, and so the ones that had... They couldn't pay the ta the capitation tax. You know, they had their children take away, took, taken away from them. It says, or the ones that were forced to remain in Portugal, because uh, uh, when Port the Portuguese, when King John get gave that declaration for the Jews to get out, he said he get it set a date. 
that if they didn't get out by that time, um, that they would be uh, arrested or or enslaved and enslaved. Um, and let's see what happened to them. Uh, so the ones that had admitted to pay the capitation tax on entering or those who were forced to remain in Portugal and they had them transported, they had them sent to the newly discovered islands of St. Thomas. So he took the Jews to St. Thomas, which then swarmed with alligators and other beasts of prey to be brought up as Christians. Um, and so just keep in mind that with this reference, so this reference tells us that the, um, that the children of the Jews and the Jew, you know, we know that there were, um, uh, women and, um, you know, men in there as well. But for the most part, they were the children that were taken from the, the Jews in Portu Portugal and Spain and that they were sent, you know, according to this particular reference, they were sent to St. Thomas, but we have some other references that'll show you exactly where they were sent in addition to uh, St. Thomas, which is on the west coast of Africa. All right, so um, we're going to exit out of this presentation. So now we've, we've learned that the um, during the time of the Inquisition, um, and this was just one of the expulsion edicts, that the uh, Jews were sent to the uh, west coast of Africa, in particular uh, St. Thomas Island. All right, so for our next uh, uh, reference, th now this is uh, what I call a... Uh, a high high value reference and the reason why I call it that is is because of um, uh, the time period that this reference comes from and the person who it comes from so this particular re reference comes from um, um, a uh, author called John Ogilvy and I'm gonna see if I can uh, uh, get to the title screen so you can see the author in the title. Um, about John Ogilvy, he was the uh, cosmographer and printer uh, to the king. And I believe it was King Charles, Charles II. So um, so John Ogilvy would be a person of interest. We, you know, we would want to know what John Ogilvy would have to say because he would be someone that would have the ear of the king at the time. And we know that the, um, you know, that London, um, you know, that they played a major role in the transatlantic slave trade. So uh, for this one, uh, for this reference, I believe the reference for this guy is way back. There's a couple of, there's actually some really good material in here, but we're going to go to uh, one that's all the way in the back of the book. So if you can, well, let me zoom in just so that you can see the, the uh, title, if you can't already see it. So uh, let me do that first. And my screen's still rendering. All right. So this is the book that we're going to take a look at. Uh, this, too, is one of those uh, rare books that is hard to um, get a hold of. There used to be digital copies out there floating on, uh, on arch archive.org, but they pulled, pulled those copies. Uh, so you almost have, you have to kind of poke around to see if you can get it. Um, yeah, I will, and I'll, I'll put some links out there for them. But uh, let me zoom back out, and I'm going to go over to page, um, let's see here. We're going to do page, I believe it's 575. And let's see if it renders. All right. Yep. So actually, um, page 574, I think that's the interesting uh, paragraph. So on page 574, uh, this is uh, just kind of give you some background. This is uh, talking about King John again. So this is about you know King John. This is about uh, discussing Portugal and west coast of Africa and you know um, the people that the people that were there. So this interesting gives us gives a really good description as to who's on the west coast of Africa and who put them there. I'll say that again. This reference is a good reference that shows us who's on the west coast of Africa and who put them there. So halfway down on the page, and you know, it's one of those books. Like if you, you know, uh, if you can get your hands on a digital copy, um, you know, feel free, feel free to read the whole thing uh, for context. But uh, this 
these couple of paragraphs pretty much sum up the whole uh, west coast of Africa. And it says, um, you know, the Portuguese that dwelt on this island, uh, that's St. Thomas, uh, informed the, the Netherlanders, the Dutch, that few lived above 50 years there. That few lived above 50 years there. Yet, notwithstanding the great gain, tempted them to tarry. So there was money to be had. So, um, you know, the Netherlanders wanted to go anyway. So, but the Portuguese kind of warned us. They told them that, you know, on this island, you know, we, we don't live long. And basically, the Europeans didn't live uh, long in Africa when they when they went there at the time because of the um, you know because of the weather and the, the plagues and all that stuff. So um, let's read it again. It says the Portuguese that dwelt on this island informed the Netherlanders that few lived there above fifty years years there. Yet, notwithstanding the great gain, tempted them to tarry. So there's money to be had. It says several of them having two or three hundred Negroes that worked in the sugar mills. And we have a semicolon that says, it's going to explain it, it says that John the Third, King of Portugal, that we just read about, right, um, sent a colony thither above two hundred years before. So two hundred years before the writing of this book, this book was written in uh, 1670, I think, so 200 years before that book, uh, King John, who was around in the, the 1400s, he sent a colony there, who, whom though the unwholesome air destroyed. So the colony that the first colony that he sent there, you know, it killed him. It said, yet the place was not left desolate, so they did not all die. He said, for he sent new inhabitants, who first settled Guinea. Now, if you have a map of Guinea, uh, Guinea is the west coast of Africa, all right? So these people, he's, so the king sent new inhabitants who first settled Guinea, and this is in the 1400s. Next, in Angola, you know, if you're familiar with the continent of Africa, Angola is just below um, Nigeria. You know, you got Congo, then you got Nigeria, so that, that whole area. Um... And lastly, on the island of St. Thomas. So remember, we read about St. Thomas on, the, uh, on, the pr on our previous um, reference. If you don't remember, you know, just feel free to back up the, 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 pr the presentation. But I'm going to read it again uh, without stopping here. Hang on. All right. <clears throat> that John III, king of Portugal, sent a colony thither above 200 years before. Whom the unwholesome air destroyed, yet the place was not left desolate. For he sent new inhabitants who first settled Guinea, next in Angola, and lastly on the island of St. Thomas. So this tells us that the King John <clears throat> sent a colony to those three places, which was the west coast of Africa. And let's read, read what um, uh, John Ogilvy has to say about it. So he says, um, let's see, for he sent new inhabitants who first settled Guinea, next in Angola, and lastly on the island of St. Thomas, that so they might be better used to the air, that the said king sold all those Jews for slaves. Uh, <laughs> let me repeat. So, you know, King John is, you know, the king of Portugal, and we read uh, three or four, or three, uh, I think it was either two or three references back that, um, you know, the king, <clears throat> king of Portugal petitioned the Pope uh, for, you know, to for uh, slavery, right? So the Pope issued that papal bull, authorized it, things kicked off. And you may have maybe wondering why would a Pope um, uh, authorize the Negro slave trade? Well, it looks like we have our answer here. So, um, if we read this again, it says, um, uh, I'm just going to back up a, a little bit just so that we get the proper context. It says that John III, King of Portugal, sent a colony thither above 200 years before. So, back in the 1400s, whom the, though the unwholesome air destroyed, 
Yet the place was not left desolate, for he sent new inhabitants who first settled in Guinea, next in Angola, and lastly on the island of St. Thomas, West Africa. So, so uh, that so they might be better used to the air that the said king sold all those Jews for slaves that refused to embrace the Roman religion. Let me read that again. Um, that the said king sold all those Jews for slaves that refused to embrace the Roman religion. So now you know why the, why the Pope at the time authorized the transatlantic slave trade. But let's keep reading. And caused their children to be baptized. And we read about the children in other, the previous uh, reference. Uh, and caused their children to be baptized from whom coming thither to that place, the west coast of Africa, in great numbers you got to read this one slow it says coming coming thither in great numbers then it says most of the present inhabitants were descended <laughs> let me read that one again it says from whom coming thither in great numbers west coast of africa the Jews coming there in great numbers, who were, according to this, were sold as slaves. He said, most of the present inhabitants there were descended. So, um, <clears throat> now you, you can understand why this book wouldn't be out there on mainstream, right? Because uh, this, you know, these uh, this reference is, is pretty damaging. Uh, there's some also awesome, some other... Uh, text in this book as well, but that's uh, pretty much, you know, your transatlantic slave trade in a nutshell. But we're not done. It, but wait, but wait, there's more. <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to leave this reference um, and go over to our next reference because uh, we want to get some more understanding about um, the. Uh, Transatlantic slave trade and these now and now, you know, reading this uh, this reference. Now we know that there are there were Jews on the west coast of Africa, and we also know who put them there, and we know who sold them as slaves, and we know that Portugal was one of the first uh, countries to participate in the transatlantic slave trade. Okay, all right. So for this next. Um, <clears throat> Next reference. This, this is also a, a John a reference from John Ogilby, but this book is called Africa, being an accurate description of the regions. So I have it up on the screen. I'm going to zoom in just so that you can see the uh, the title. And this too is a digital copy, and I'm going to zoom back out so that I can navigate the pages. And I believe the um, there's a couple of pages of interest in here, but the uh, the one that I want is um, 34. We got a graphic there. Let me just keep going. Uh, there it is. All right. <clears throat> so page 34. All right. So page 34. I'm just going to start at the top of page 34 and read down. And this uh, book confirms who is uh, are on the west coast of Africa. Okay. All right. <clears throat> it reads, many Jews also are scattered over this region. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed inhabiting both sides of the riv river Neger. Now, you may be looking at the screen and wondering why I'm not pronouncing that Niger. That's because back in the day, it wasn't called Niger. That's a relatively modern pronunciation of it. It's actually, it was actually called nigger. And that's where um, the word nigger, you know, the derogatory term comes from uh, in the States. And that's because of the, the slaves that were, um, were gathered were, were gathered from the, the, the river uh, nigger delta. So this tells us who.
who the, the niggers are, um, uh, according to the, to the people um, around during that time. So let's read. It says, um, let me start again. It says, many Jews also are scattered over this region. So we, you know, there's not a whole lot of um, interpretation that we need around that. So we know a lot of Jews were scattered over this region. It says, some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed inhabiting both sides of the river nigger others are asian strangers who fled thither either from the desolation of jerusalem by vespasian or from judea wasted and depopulated by the romans persians uh sarsians and christians so basically all the jews fled from from these different places and came to the west coast of Africa is what um, John Ogilvy is writing here you know who let me just remind you he's the cosmographer and geographic printer of the king of the king so this isn't uh, just some some guy right this is a uh, what we refer to as a high value reference all right um, <clears throat> or else such as came out of Europe and I need to read that again. Or as much, or else such as came out of Europe, whence they were banished. Because what a lot of people don't don't know is that the Jews were banished out of those out of the European countries. So all this talk about the Jews going up and living happily in Europe, that's kind of a half truth. You know, maybe for the Edomite Jews they could pull that off, but for the um um for the real Jews, the real Jews were banished out of Europe. All right, so it, um, or else uh, such came out of Europe once they were banished out of some parts of Italy in 1342, out of Spain in the year 1462, <clears throat> out of the Low Countries in 1350, out of France in 1403, out of England in 1422. These all differ in habit and are divided into several tribes, having no dominion, though both wealthy and numerous. So let me just stop here just to kind of uh, review what we've read so far. So uh, this quote tells us that many Jews were on the west coast of Africa. They were in the, um, the Nigger River region. Um, and uh, and also that the uh, Jews that were in the west coast of Africa uh, were not only just the ones that were placed there by the um, by the Portuguese, but they were also ones that the Jews that fled from all these various places, like from Jerusalem, from the Romans, from the Persians, from the um, from the Christians, and so forth. So this is kind of like a gathering place for the Jews, so to speak. All right. Uh, let's keep reading. It says, uh, these all differ in habit and are divided into several tribes, having no dominion, though both wealthy and numerous, but despised of all nations, and so abominated by the Turks that they are not admitted to be Mohammedans, unless first baptized, uh, and then no otherwise made use of than to receive their customs and to gather their taxes. So basically, it's just saying that... Um, that these Jews were despised out of all the nations. And here they were sitting on the west coast of Africa. Um, and the Mohammedans, you know, used them just to gather their taxes. But um, the uh, European nations sent them into uh, slavery, according to um, uh, John Ogilvy. Okay. All right. So we got that. Um, let me see if, I, if there's another reference we want to share. Um, all right, so we read a, read this quote here, um, you know, the Jews of Spain and Portugal. Um, and this one, uh, when we read this one, we read that the uh, king of Portugal um, uh, evicted, expelled the Jews from his country, took the children away, and, and this quote says that he took, he took them to St. Thomas Island. John Ogilvy uh, then goes on to say that... Um, they not only put, took the uh, the Jews to St. Thomas, but they took them to uh, Guinea and Angola as well. Um, 
And this next quote <clears throat> uh, comes from, let's see, you can see the book there's Port, uh, Portuguese Exploration to the West and the uh, Formation of Brazil. But this is another um, a high value reference. So this reference comes from, and I'm going to butcher his name, but it's uh, Garcia de Resendi. Um, and he, and this guy is the official chronicler of King, King John. All right, so he's the, chronic, the chronicler of the king. So let's see if, if um, Garcia de Resendi says anything different than what uh, John Ogilby, who's the cosmographer of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of the king. So it, um, it's going to read um, a little down from the top here. It says, by the year 1470, the Portuguese had found the equatorial islands of St. Thomas in the, Guinea, in the Ghanaian coast off the African coast. The climate proved to be extremely wholesome for Europe, unwholesome for Europeans, and, so, and settlement was slow. So basically, he's affirming what we read in some of our other references, which just said that the, um, the Europeans didn't live long when they went to the west coast of Africa. Um, it goes on to say, the official, um, the official chronicler of King John, that's the, it's John right there, uh, Garcia de Resendi reports on one of the methods to populate this island that also throws light, throws some light on the tragic form of Jewish participation in the Portuguese Atlantic Empire. It says the king had allowed Jewish refugees from Spain from where they had been expelled. The king, let me read that again. It says the king had allowed Jewish refugees from Spain, from where they had been expelled, to remain in Portugal only in return for payment of an enormous ransom. We read that in a different uh, reference as well. It says, in 1493, those who could not pay had their children taken away from them, baptized by force, and deported to St. Thomas in order to be raised as Christians and to help populate the island that the king had just leased. And I'm just going to skip <clears throat> uh, to the last sentence here. And it says, nothing is known of their further fate, although later chroniclers attribute the thriving sugar production on the island to the talents of these deported children and their offspring. So this one, uh, this reference tells us that the... Um, Portuguese sent the uh, children, uh, well, took the children <laughs> away from the, the uh, Jews, baptized them by force, and put them into slavery, basically is what it said. All right. And this is just a, another, uh, just a side note here, just to kind of show you that the uh, uh, a description of the, the uh, Portuguese community. So the very last sentence on this page. I don't have a page number. I, I, I'll, I'll try to get you that page. I'll get you that page number. And it says, the documents also describe the evolution of the black, Portu of the black Portuguese communities in Guinea and the islands, you know, as well as the slave trade and the way it was organized, understood, and justified. So I just wanted to call this out to, to show you that the uh, communities were black communities. All right. Um, hopefully you can see the name of the, uh, this uh, book. This is, a, this is another digital book. You can see it on the left. As you can see, it's a free book um, um, on Google Books. And this quote comes from page uh, 218. I'll give you a chance to take a look at that. Now, this speaks, this particular reference speaks to the um, uh, the uh, those that were convicted by the Inquisition. Uh, this um, and uh, this is referring to the west coast of Africa. And if you start at the top of the page, kind of cut off some of that. But if you start at the top of the page, you'll see it's referring to the west coast of Africa. And there's a footnote at the bottom of the page to show you the countries that it's referring to uh, on the west coast of Africa. But I'll, I'll read here um, uh, the last couple of sentences at the bottom it says moreover in spain 
they but seldom put their malefactors, their, you know, mal, the word malefactors means criminals. So I'll read that and just kind of substitute malefactors. It says, moreover, in Spain, they but seldom put their criminals to death, as we do in France. They send them all to these desert countries to traffic there. So the word traffic means um, slavery. So they send them all to these desert countries. What desert countries? Well, you can see the countries listed in the footnote at the bottom. Um, you know, this is basically the Congo, uh, Angola, basically the west coast of Africa. So what this reference tells us is that Spain was sending their criminals, their so-called criminals, their Jews, uh, to the west coast of Africa as for slaves. All right. And uh, <clears throat> interesting tidbit about the Inquisition. So the actual book of the Inquisition that contained like the bylaw, the bylaws and stuff like that. Um, that book had many, you know, nicknames. But one of the one of the the nicknames was it was called the Libro Negro. And that's the book of the Inquisition. It was sometimes called the Libro Negro, or you can see the Libro Necro, the, the book the book of the dead. But the Libro Negro um, is a name for the the um, uh, you know the official book of the Inquisition. Within that book, it 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 showed the crimes and the and how to conduct the uh, uh, the trials and also the the sentences. And this is just one of those books that are out there uh, on Amazon, <clears throat> just to show you that it's called the you know the El Libro Negro de la Inquisición. Uh, you know. Uh, the Black Book of the Inquisition. Um, and this is just another cross-reference uh, from St. John of the Cross. Uh, you know, it just reads, Thus the Libro Negro, in which were recorded the acts of the chapters and defini defin definitioraries, uh, vanished except for a few extracts. So just saying that the, in in the Libro Negro disappeared after, after a while. It's kind of hard to find. All right, I'm going to skip that one, uh, that reference. Okay, all right, so um, I'm going to back Region. Up. So in the Libro Negro, and actually, let me exit out of here and go over to a web browser because I think I have a better view of this. Uh, hopefully, you can see this in your, uh, your, uh, your screen. But the name of this book is A Narrative of the Persecution of Hippolito uh, Joseph de Costa, Volume 2. And within this book, um, it defines some of the um, uh, some of the sentences that were uh, given out um, as part of the Inquisition. Like, so basically what the Inquisition was, you know, you, you had the, um, you know, the, I call them like the secret police um, for the Jews that didn't want to embrace the Roman version of Christianity, um, they would get they would be arrested, and then you know by the Inquisition um, officers, and they would be tortured, um, and they would try to to wrestle a, a confession from them, uh, and uh, and then either burn them at the stake, or they would uh, ship them off somewhere. So the purpose of this um, reference is to to tell us where the uh, those that were convicted by the Inquisition uh, to, this uh, we want to use this reference to tell us where the, um, uh, the the convicted Jews were sent so what I did I just did a quick search here and it's, um, just to just to show you the uh, 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 the places so we're just gonna run through them really quick but it says uh, uh, <clears throat> and she shall be this, and this is just kind of reading off the punishments and, that, and she shall be sent to the galleys <clears throat> and if a female she shall be exiled to the island of Principe West Africa, St. Thomas West Africa or Angola and this one is we kind of catch this one mid sentence here but it says uh, shall be condemned to the same punishment of whipping and shall be exiled for the same period to the kingdom of Angola or some parts of Brazil. Uh, I think this one's mid-sentence to, let's see, it says, uh, 
and shall be sent to the galleys or exiled to St. Thomas or Angola. And this one's another one, uh, exiled to the island of Principe, St. Thomas or Angola, West Africa. Uh, shall be exiled for many, for as many years to Brazil or Angola. And uh, shall be exiled to St. Thomas, Angola or Brazil. And there's a few more here. Um, and it's pretty much the same thing. You'll see St. Thomas, Angola or Brazil. Uh, for a lot of these. So basically the ink what the Inquisition was doing was that it was sending um, those Jews that were convicted um, It was sending them to the uh, uh, To the west coast of Africa so um, I think we'll, we'll stop there for now um, and uh, uh, We'll pick this up in another video But this is uh, we'll end we'll end this video. We'll call it um, um, part one and this is uh, Black History, the Inquisition. Black History, the Inquisition. And hopefully with some of these references, you can begin to see how uh, the Inquisition um, had a direct impact mostly you know, on uh, the so-called African-American, which are the, uh, the, the true, uh, true Hebrews or the true children of Jude, uh, from the house of Judah. So uh, thank you for watching. Um, there will be another uh, video to come <clears throat> video to come. I do have another video coming up on the color of the Jews to kind of put that whole conversation to bed as far as what what the Jews look like. Uh, we'll kind of ramp up the, uh, the the references on that one uh, just so that, you know, uh, we'll kinda, we can kind of squash all that all, all the back and forth as far as the color of the Jews. I just want to I just want to make sure we leave no question by the time that video ends. So thank thank you again for watching and um, Feel free to continue your research, and by all means, make these references your own. And with that said, Shalom.